die Freiheit, sich Zeit und Ruhe zu nehmen, um die Umwelt, die eigene Umwelt, aber auch fremde Umwelt zu entdecken. Sich genau diese Zeit und diese Ruhe zu nehmen, ganz einfach. Welcome lovers of the great outdoors. We're about to leave on holidays. My name is Umberto and traveling with me are Christiana, Angelica and Davide. We want to become acquainted with our new vehicle before setting off. Our holidays are going to be special. The first part will be a cultural historical journey together to discover marvelous cities. The second part will be more relaxed. We'll enjoy a typical holiday at the seaside, that is in a camping site swimming pool, beach, and just sitting back. Before leaving, we want you to become acquainted with our vehicle and let you in on some of its secrets. The first door contains the heating, cooking, gas tanks, which have been securely fastened. One is hooked up. We have to make sure they're completely closed when we're traveling, and we have to make sure we have the wrench needed to replace the tanks if need be. Everything is in place, everything is set, we can close the door and move to the water intake. This is the water intake that enables us to fill the white water tank, the tank that contains clean water. This tank supplies water to the bathroom sink, the toilet, the shower, and the kitchen sink. The other door, on the other hand, contains the black water tank. That is the drainage from the toilet. It's located here in its compartment and we'll get to know how to use it during the trip. In the last door on this side, there's a surprise. We're not going to open it yet. This is the corresponding door. And in this other little door, there's a small sink with a shower. It can be used to wash a little bit before going into the living quarters. If we go on, we see a cover that fits over the air take of the water heater. When the vehicle is stationary, and especially when you need to use the water heater, this cover must be removed. When traveling, on the other hand, the cover must always be kept on to avoid dust and dirt getting into the air intake. This other little door takes us to the internal electric circuit. There is a whole series of fuses and the 12 volt battery that recharges while the vehicle is traveling and which supplies the 12 volt appliances inside when the vehicle is standing still. So this is the electrical part. Let's close the door and go on. This is the external power socket used to supply 220 volts to the living quarters. And finally, but here we're dealing with the base vehicle. And uh, here, lodged in this small space, there is the jack, which can be used if needed. And now, let's go and see the living quarters. Turismo del Nere è essenzialmente uno stile di vita, nel senso che chi gli piace praticamente il contatto con l'ambiente, la natura, il camper, ti dà diciamo, tutte queste possibilità. As you can see, there are large windows, there are portholes that can be used for air intake to get the air to circulate inside. I'll draw your attention to this particular kind of porthole, which is equipped with a fan, which, with the flick of a switch, you can hear the fan go on, brings clean air inside at different speeds or by pressing this other switch, takes out the hot air from inside the vehicle. So from the inside out, making the air circulate. This is very practical and really helps to breathe better inside the living quarters.
Getting back to what we were saying, great comfort. Four fixed berths. One bedroom up there. And as you can see, another double bedroom over here. Then there is the dinette, which is also the daytime living area that can become another double bed or alternatively a table area or an extended dining area. As you can see, it's quite easy, the bed is made. Let's continue our visit to our house on wheels. There are a series of cupboards in which to store our family's things, the wardrobe. And this door takes us to the bathroom. As you can see, there is the shower, the sink, and the classical toilet, which is easy to use, just like any toilets you have at home. With the exception that you have to remember to open and close the valve when you're finished using it. Very well, we've seen the bathroom. Let's go back to the living quarters and look at the kitchen space. Here's the kitchen space. Three burners. Next to them, the sink with a cover that can be used as counter space. Turning on the water heater is very simple. There's a push button to select the temperature, either 50 or 70 degrees, a 220 volt socket. At the top, there are cupboards for the kitchen wares. A 12 volt socket, the switch for the light, for the light over the sink, and for the fume hood. The bottom part is quite interesting. Well, there's the cutlery drawer, and then there are two cabinets, one here and one here. This second cabinet is very important because it contains the lever switches for the gas and for the various appliances. There are basically four appliances inside the motorhome. The fridge, which can also work with gas in case the stationary vehicle is not hooked up to the mains, the water heater, which we've already seen, the gas cooker, and the heater. Regarding the heater, well, we're in summer now, so it's not necessary to turn it on, but the heater is essential since motorhomes are vehicles that can also be used very well during the winter, as we can see from the following video clip. Let's look at the video clip to learn how to turn on the heater. There are various types of heater, so be very careful to what is said. We won't turn the heater on now, but let's see how it works in detail. Outdoor tourism vacations can be organized year-round. Our vehicle is therefore equipped with an additional accessory which is indispensable for winter use. It's the heater. Let's see how it works. In order to turn it on, we have to open the gas flow to this accessory. Turn the control knob to position 2 or 3 and press it down. A constant ticking sound tells us that the automatic ignition system is working. When the noise stops, the heater is on and you should be able to see the flame through the small transparent window. Keep the knob pressed for another 15 seconds, then let it go. If the flame stays on, the operation was successful. If it goes off, you have to go through the procedure again. In order to distribute the heat better, there is also a forced air system which consists of a fan located behind the body of the heater which absorbs the heat and conveys it through the pipes to the various heat vents located in the motorhome. To turn on this system, use the selecting switch located on the knob on the right. The flow of air can be adjusted manually using the graduated knob or automatically. If you have a combined heater, its functioning is almost completely electronic. All of the ignition steps are performed through the selecting switch located on the right. It has three positions and in the middle it is off. 
When it's down, it controls the water heater. The selecting switch on the left enables you to set the temperature to 60 or 40 degrees. When it is up, it turns on both the water and the air heater. You can then set the desired temperature using the graduated knob. To turn on this other model, all you have to do is turn the selecting switch. The green light in the middle shows us that the heater is on. Since there are many types of heater, depending on which motorhome model you have, you may find yourself in front of any one of these types of heater. Similarly, there are also different types of refrigerators. The one in front of us is completely electronically controlled. This is the on-off switch. This is the switch for selecting the power supply. By pressing this switch, we have, as you can see, several options. Let's examine them. This first option, let's select it right, this first option tells us that the fridge will automatically select the dominant power supply. If, on the other hand, we want to select the power supply manually, go on like this, privileging 12 volts, and if you want gas. Like this, gas is privileged. And finally, you can privilege electricity. As you can see, this red light continues to flash because all of these appliances at the moment are turned off. The fridge is not on. The switch here at the side, on the other hand, enables us to select the temperature, more or less cold, inside the fridge. The fridge we've seen is not on right now, while the main control unit, on the other hand, is on. And it should always remain on. This device, we can say, is at the very center of the whole system, the very heart of our motorhome. The central control unit we have in front of us is one of the most simple. As you can see, it has two buttons and a display with graduated scales that I'll now show you. Let's begin with this first switch. It shows OK for the water pump. So by turning on this switch, we turn on the water pump. We can now supply water to the taps in the motorhome. If the light here at the top turns on, it indicates that there are problems with the hydraulic system. Similarly, this light up here shows that there are problems with the electrical system, which we will now activate. At the moment, the electrical system is being supplied by the 12-volt battery. Because the vehicle is not moving and is not connected to the mains, when it's connected to the mains and, we will see later, the vehicle is running, this other light will turn on. Let's look at the display for the electrical part. We can see that the batteries are almost completely charged. The 12 volt battery is almost at the top. We can say the situation is quite good. Let's look at the display for the hydraulic system. We filled up with water and the white water or drinkable water tank is full. The light that goes on here at the top indicates that the grey water tanks are full and must be emptied. When it's time to empty the tanks, that is the grey waters must be emptied, this light turns on. I've told you that there are different types of main control panels, just as there are different types of fridge. So what can we do? Let's use our TV again and watch a video clip. If someone has a different type of motorhome with a different fridge or main control unit, please take note and watch this video clip carefully. We can begin. This model of electronic control panel is actually a true onboard computer. It is made up of a liquid crystal display, a set of easy function keys, and an electronic cursor. It enables you to perform a complete check of the vehicle. Let's turn it on using this first button and learn how to use its main keys. This key is for the electrical circuit. This one is for the water pump. This one for identifying possible problems. In this case, the light indicates that the water tank is empty. Other symbols can appear on the display, the hookup to the mains, the charge of the batteries of both the motor and the living quarters, the time, the drinkable water level. To go from one function to the next, use the electronic cursor. In our case, let's go to the symbol of the pump, which is off. Using the lower part of the cursor, we can perform a check protection, problems, and the on-off status. When on, the symbol light, the symbol lights up on the display. As you can see, by using the cursor and the various icons, 
we can control the various functions of the camper, switching things on, off, or performing checks. Similarly, we can control the time, the white water tank, the grey water tank, the battery of the motor, and of the living quarters, and so on. The hookup to the mains is also an electronically controlled function. We can go to the symbol of the plug and press OK. The display shows it's off. Now if we plug in the extension cord, the symbol of the hookup to the mains appears. If we press OK, we confirm that the motorhome is in fact hooked up to the mains at 220 volts. Let's look at a different type of fridge and explain how to switch it on with gas as the power supply. Let's turn the knob of the thermostat on high and press it down. This way we turn on the fridge. You should hear a ticking sound and the on light should start to flash. When the fridge is successfully on, both the ticking and the flashing should stop. At this point, keep the thermostat knob pressed for about 15 seconds. You can then let it go and adjust it to the desired temperature. If when you let go of the knob, the ticking and flashing start up again, this means that the fridge did not switch on, so you must repeat the procedure. If our motorhome is equipped with an electronic fridge, the on-off switch automatically turns on the appliance. In this case, the fridge's temperature must be adjusted using the corresponding push button. Before setting off on our trip, we must buy some indispensable things for our motorhome. As you can see, there's so much we don't know what to choose. There are some great things that can be extra comforts on our holiday, but there are other things that we can really not do without, and it's better not to leave if we don't have them. wedges, the extension cord, another indispensable accessory is the rubber hose for filling the water tanks and the toilet paper. It may be taken for granted, but the toilet paper for fixed and portable toilets must dissolve completely and immediately in the water, so you must buy a special kind of toilet paper. This one is just what we need. To help the toilet paper dissolve and to keep the toilet clean, we then need this liquid. This liquid sanitizes the drainage waters of the toilet and is again just what we need. I'll show you later how much of it's needed and how to use it. And so now, we've bought the five fundamental things we needed, but there is actually still a sixth one, which is the spirit level. We need the level to see whether the motorhome is level or not. This particular motorhome is already equipped with a level which is fixed to the floor. Here it is. So we don't need to buy another one. In case you don't have one on the floor, you'll need to get just a little one. With this, now you're ready. Actually, we are ready to leave. Where's the map? Go get the map. Il turismo plein air è sicuramente la vacanza di massima libertà possibile che uno possa fare. to find a place in this campsite. They gave us hospitality, so now let's be quiet, even the children. Let's go to sleep, and we'll see you in the morning, because our trip continues. One of the fundamental rules is not to disturb others. Są to podróże, wolny czas spędzony na świeżym powietrzu. Ciągle nowe miejsca, ciągle nowe twarze, nigdy nie trzeba szukać hotelu. To jest najważniejsze. Podróże, jeszcze raz podróże i wolność.
Very well, we managed to find somewhere to spend the night. As you saw, we arrived at the last minute and were probably unexpected, unexpected guests, but they gave us hospitality. This is special. Motorhome life, outdoor life, also means this, finding accommodation, finding a place to stay, even when one least expects it. The sun is now playing hide and seek with the clouds, and we're in Versilia. Gens utilisent le camping car aujourd'hui pour découvrir la nature, passer des bons moments en famille, se retrouver en famille et entre amis, et découvrir ou redécouvrir l'esprit de liberté. A quick look at the onboard computer tells us that the white waters are almost finished and as a result the grey water tanks must be emptied. What's very important is finding an authorised location. We close the manhole and reposition the motorhome. We are now ready to open the second tap. Let's reopen the manhole and empty the second grey water tank. As you can see, these areas are extremely useful and it's important to use them. Do not empty the water tanks in any other area that is not an authorized emptying area. We emptied our tanks, so at this point, all we have to do is close the manhole. Here we go. We are ready to leave. The motorhome is noticeably lighter. We now obviously have to refill the water tanks, but we can do this at our next stop. About to arrive in Rome, we are travelling on the circular freeway called Raccordo Anulare and we will shortly be in the city centre. We will be able to see some monuments, some nice views and especially for you children, keep your eyes open because when we enter Rome, you will see things that you'll then study at school. Well, let's say that to get to the city centre, there's a bit of traffic, but it's worth the trouble. Here there are some tourists queuing up to see the Vatican Museums. St. Peter's Basilica, the largest church in the world, founded in 324 by the Emperor Constantine and located in the Vatican State. Well, it wasn't quite like this at the beginning. The works to transform the original church into this basilica began in 1506 and the project was made by Barmante. Behind us is Castel St. Angelo. It was built in the second century after Christ and was the mausoleum of Emperor Adrian's family. The Altare della Patria, or Vittoriano as it's now called, owes its name to Vittorio Emanuele II, who was the first king of Italy. In 1878, when Vittorio Emanuele died, it was decided to build a monument to celebrate this father of the country as an open area accessible to all citizens. Children, look, this is the Colosseum. Its real name is Flavio's Amphitheatre. It was subsequently called Colosseum in the 11th century. And you know why? No? Shall I tell you? It's because near here there was a huge bronze statue of Nero, a colossal statue. And so the Amphitheatre of Flavio started being called Colosseum. El turismo plein air es el turismo per camper, que es la plena libertad que hay para hacer turismo, en la cual eh, es muy distinto a todo lo que se trate de un turismo en hotel o un turismo eh, precisamente libre en, to en cualquier parte del mundo, sobre todo en Europa. Well, the visit to Rome went very well. Now we've arrived at the campsite. To tell you the truth, we're also a bit tired, but before parking in our area, we must still do one more thing fill in the white water tanks. 
Remember, we'd emptied the grey waters. So, let's go load the tank. Let's turn on the water right away and fill up. Then we can go and park the motorhome in the area assigned to us. Turn on the water and fill up right away. Are you ready? Water! The tank is full. We filled the white water tank up again so we can go to our parking area and connect the motorhome to the mains. Open the heating, cooking, gas tanks and make the motorhome ready for use. The children went to the beach and are playing there now. We'll take advantage of this relatively quiet moment to place our motorhome correctly. First of all, we've already put it up on the wedges so as to level the living quarters. As you can see, it's perfectly level. Now we can put down the stabilizers. Follow me. We've already put them down on the other side. The vehicle is stabilized. Now we can connect to the mains. Let's take out the extension cord and go to the power supply column. Let's put the plug into the socket. And connect the other end to the motorhome. Ready? Let's plug it in. As you can see, the light has gone on. Last thing. Let's turn on the gas. Let's turn on the lever switches of the gas burners, the fridge and the water heater. Finally, let's switch the power supply of the fridge to the mains. Here we go. Now our motorhome is really ready. Con camper naturalmente si intende una vacanza a, a stretto contatto con la natura. We left the Ostia Lido campsite early in the morning and we set off on our trip again. We are now in Umbria. The hills you see to my right, my left, and in front of us are the famous hills of Umbria. We are continuing on our touristic cultural journey. We're going to visit wonderful places with our beautiful house on wheels. We are living cultural experiences. We're in contact with nature, with the environment which, may I remind you, must always be protected. Oh yes, this is one of the main tasks of people who love the outdoors. We're now in Tuscany. We've abandoned the highway and are traveling on the state road to enjoy this beautiful panorama of the hills. This is also important for the children, especially for Angelica, who already goes to school and who's studying the geography of Italy. This way, she can see firsthand the way the landscape is made, the differences between the various regions of Italy. There are things she normally reads about and studies at school. Now she can see them with her own eyes. Angelica, we're in San Gimignano, the city of the 100 Towers. This was an ancient medieval village which dates back to the 10th century. It gets its name from the patron saint of Modena, who in ancient times apparently really saved this medieval village from the barbarians. Here we are, Angelica. Look how marvelous it is. We're here on the Piazzale Michelangelo. 
Below us is Florence. Look at the Brunelleschi dome, it's really beautiful, fantastic. We're on the Piazzale Michelangelo. Here in Florence, we reach the end of the first part of our trip. Now we'll head towards the seaside for a more relaxing holiday in Liguria, in the usual campsite we go to every year. There, we'll also discover some little secrets of our motorhome. Oh, I almost forgot. There's still the little secret of this door and the one opposite. We'll talk about it later because it's a surprise I kept especially for you. But what better surprise than what we're looking at right now? Ah, what a nice holiday. We discovered a new and different form of outdoor tourism, a partly cultural outdoor tourism, if you like. Quello là è il Palazzo Vecchio, la torre è vecchia, se no sarebbe un palazzo nuovo, sarebbe un grattacielo, mica il Palazzo Vecchio. Quella invece è la cupola del Brunellese. Questo non è niente, per me è avere contatto con la natura, muoversi in libertà, se uno ha uno spirito libero si può muovere dove vuole. The motorhome is a mechanical vehicle, so once in a while we can run into some small problems like this one. What do we do? First of all, you must bring to the vehicle as close as possible to the side of the road. Pull the handbrake. Turn off the engine. Turn on the hazard lights. After that, get down from the vehicle from the passenger side and, look here, with your safety vest, go and place the triangle on the road. It has to be placed at least 50 meters back from where the vehicle is stopped. Now you can call the road assistance from an SOS post, as luckily in this case, or with our own private means. It's important to remember one thing. When a group of motorhomes are traveling together, which is called a convoy, if one of the motorhomes has to stop, you must place two emergency triangles and not just one. Hold on, hold on, watch out Angelica. What are you doing? You can't open the window. This is another important point for all of those who are watching to remember. You cannot make anything stick out of the shape of the vehicle when the motorhome is stopped in an area which is not made for camping. This is a fundamental rule. We can't take up any extra room. We say the vehicle must remain in travel position. It must remi remain its shape with no camp tables, no picnic chairs, etc. You cannot do anything except remain still. In this case, you must be patient and wait for assistance. Possibly, without getting angry, the children are watching. With the camping-car, we enter into the countries, we discover people, we talk with people of the territory, and that is really something encouraging and that people appreciate more and more. Finally, we arrive at our destination. Before getting to the area assigned to us, we have already dealt with the tanks, emptying the grey waters, filling up with drinking water, and now, since this day will be longer than the others, we can prepare the motorhome for parking. Meanwhile, the children have already gone swimming. No one can stop them. They put on their bathing suit and said, you get on with your work, we'll go and have fun, just to be sure. So there they are, having fun. We, on the other hand, we have to level the motorhome using the wedges as we've already done before. We'll lower the stabilizers. We can now hook up to the mains to bring power to the whole system. We can open the gas tanks, the lever switches for the various appliances, Obviously, we don't need the heater. As far as the gas appliances are concerned, we want to underline that all of them have a safety valve, a thermocouple, so in case there's a gas leak, the gas system shuts down completely. There's no danger whatsoever. Let's go on with our work. We have to convert the power supply of the fridge.
and turn on the water heater to have hot water. Let's not forget to remove the external cover over the air intake. Let's open all the portholes and the windows. Finally, here we can finally do this. As we said, if the motorhome is just parked somewhere, everything must remain closed. The motorhome must remain in travel position. Here in the campsite, on the other hand, we can open the windows, the portholes. Ah, regarding the windows, they're all equipped with fly screens, which can easily be pulled up. Look, you just hook them like this. Then at night, to keep out the light when it's dawn, you can put up these blinds. This way, it'll be completely dark in the living quarters. The door also has a similar screen made especially to keep out bugs and small animals. There it is. The fly screen can be either attached directly to the door or it can be opened and closed separately. At long last, Christiana can roll down the awning. Meanwhile, we have one last check to do, the black water tank. The light that was on near the toilet tells us it's time to clean the black water tank. So let's go and open the compartment and pull out the tank. Let's go to the black water discharge area. Here we are. We've nearly reached the black water hole where we can discharge the black waters. Let's open the hole like this. And then let's open our tank. Let's keep the button pressed and clean out the tank. Let's wash the tank out with the hose. And let's put in the liquid we need to put in before using the tank again. Use the cap to measure it out. Here we go. Let's pour the dissolving liquid in. And so the tank is ready for use again. Let's go and put the tank back into place so we can use it again. Let's close up the compartment and we're done. Now we're finally on holiday. The time has come to discover what's hidden behind this door. Let's open it carefully. We're all eager to know what's inside. I told you it was a surprise. Something really fancy, right? And so inside this compartment that some people call garage and others call cellar, 
Ta-da! There's a motorbike. Our vacation has come to an end. It's time to leave the campsite. We close the awning. The windows and portholes. Remove the electric power. We close the gas tanks and faucets. Meanwhile, we've turned on the motor, we've switched the power supply from the mains to the batteries. At this point, I can remove the stabilizers. Before leaving, we must discharge the grey waters, the black waters and the drinking waters in the area equipped for this purpose. Let's turn on all the taps so that the hydraulic system decompresses. Now we're ready to go home. Fasten your seat belts. Turn on the headlights. Maximum care driving. Then let's not forget the fundamental rules. Respect for nature, respect for the environment, respect for others. These are the fundamental rules for a positive outdoor holiday, the fundamental rules of outdoor tourism. Our motorhome is set for another adventure, and certainly there'll be many more. This won't be our last holiday. And actually, if while you're traveling with your motorhome you see us somewhere, please stop us and maybe we can go for coffee together and tell each other about our travels or our adventures. In order to keep your motorhome always in good shape, it's important to store it properly. That is, putting it in a safe place and bearing in mind a few points that we'll now show you with this video. This way, we'll refresh our memory about them too. It is best to leave the vehicle parked at a slant so that no water accumulates on the roof. All windows and portholes should be left slightly open to ensure air circulation. The fridge door should be left open to avoid molds forming inside. The net pillows should be kept away from the walls. Make sure that the gas tanks have been closed. If possible, blow air into the pipes using a compressor. Well, we've said all there was to say. We're ready to go back. Thanks for your attention. Bye-bye.